In verse number 26, my son, give me thine heart. Give me thine heart. Why? Because we care about you. There's a father to the son. Give me your heart. I don't want to see you destroyed. Let thine eyes observe my ways. And, and parents, dads, don't be showing them the example that you're trying to tell them it's the wrong way. Don't be the hypocrite because they'll follow your ways more than your words. For a whore is a deep ditch and a strange woman is a narrow pit. And we'll get into that in a minute. She also lieth in wait as for a prey and increaseth the transgressors among men. Look at verse 29. Who hath woe? Who hath sorrow? Who hath contentions? Who hath babbling? Who hath wounds without cause? Who hath redness of eyes? Boy, doesn't that sound like a lot of fun? I want to have woe. Woe, woe. It doesn't just mean, you know, tell a horse to stop. Woe, woe is extreme sadness. Who is just really miserable? Who has sorrow? Who has content? Who just likes getting in a lot of fights? Man, that's just so much fun. I want to be miserable. I want to fight with a bunch of people. I want to just babble and just say stupid, meaningless things so that people can look at me like I'm an idiot because I'm just saying a bunch of dumb things. And then I get in a fight with them when they call me dumb because I'm drunk. Who hath wounds without cause? You wake up. Well, how did that happen? Oh, I don't know. Boy, doesn't it sound like fun? Okay, the world's not going to tell you about this. Amen. The guys on the job aren't going to talk about this when they're talking about going out and getting drunk. They're not going to be talking about all these things that happen. Oh, come on out. Oh, what's the matter? Oh, goody two shoes. Oh, what are you too good? Look, don't fall for, for the stupidity and, and people trying to, to judge and question your manhood and try to mock you and make fun of you and pressure you into doing things that are wicked and sinful and wrong, don't cave to that. Amen. Take this instruction to heart. Don't forget it. Who has all of these things? Verse 30, they that tarry long at the wine, they that go to seek mixed wine, that's who has these things. That's what happens. Verse 31, Look not thou upon the wine when it's red, when it giveth its color in the cup, when it moveth itself aright. And I don't care what anyone says. This is teaching. Don't be looking at booze. Amen. That's all it means. Don't you have to try to strain at a gnat and say, well, what do you mean when it moves and gives its color in the cup? And, uh, you know, and, and try to add just confusion to what the simple teaching is, you know, you, you strain it in that, you swallow a camel if you're trying to say that this isn't teaching not to look at alcohol. Don't look at booze. Nothing to do with it. It, it. it goes in tune with all the rest of the scripture. It is in context. It's warning you about this stuff. Don't even look at it. Amen. Have nothing to do with it. Right. At the last, it biteth like a serpent and stingeth like an adder. Well, how much fun is that the last time you got a snake bite? I don't know if anyone's ever gotten a snake bite before. It's not a lot of fun. In case you needed to hear that. In case you needed me to tell you. Yeah, snake bites, not fun. Not going to be a good day to get bitten by a venomous snake. It bites like a serpent. Thine eye, and it says, at the last. Right? So what people do, and this is, this is the foolishness, or I'll just have a drink. Well, I'll just have one, right? One's not going to, look, I'm not going to become a drunk because I have a beer. Really? Every drunk you see out on the street, they started off having just one. All of them have. Oh, I'm just going to have one. Well, yeah, that bite, it says, at the last it biteth like a serpent. So you say, well, I could just have one. I mean, what's, what's one going to do? One's going to make you want two. Right. Two's going to make you want to have three. Three's going to want to make you have four. And the more you have, the more your judgment goes. 
Because that's the way that booze works. And then, at the end, that's when you get the sting. That's when it bites like a serpent. That's when you really feel it. Look at verse 33. Thine eyes shall... Does it say your eyes might? No, thine eyes shall behold strange women, and thine heart shall utter perverse things. Look, the Bible is true. Don't test it. Not when it comes to this. It's not worth it. Please, take it from someone who's been there. It's not worth it. Don't let that destroy you. You have your whole life in front of you. Don't get involved in drinking. There are people that get drunk and end up committing sins that put them to jail for the rest of their life. There are people that get drunk that, that ruin, that, that, that you know, allow them to contract diseases that they're going to have for the rest of their life. There are people that get drunk that sometimes end up losing their own lives because they do something stupid. They dive into a pool that's too shallow or into a lake and hit their head on a rock or do something just that you would never think is ever in a million years going to happen to you, it happens. And it happens way more often than, than you realize. And there's some people that just die of alcohol poisoning. Say, oh, those are extreme examples. Well, that's what happens. You know who that doesn't happen to? It doesn't happen to the person who's not going and getting drunk. It doesn't happen to the person who's not having their company around among wine bibbers. It doesn't happen to those people. 